This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company up in the Toledo, Ohio area. Uh, they have such great products there as uh, Jared's mentioned for the past two months now. Has it been? I believe about two months now. Uh, some of the great, great products that they have over there, such as the Odin to coffee that will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla, or you can choose the Loki. It is a wet processed blend, which is higher in caffeine, low in acidity, rich tasting and filled with fragrance. The citrus and floral are the dominant taste in that blend. Or you can go with the fear, no evil. It's a dark roast. They state here it's a roasted to the brink of flames. The rich black dark roast is void of all light. The sheen is like polished armor. The feel is like cocoa butter. Sounds very good. Check out all <laughs> check out all of these and much, much it more is. over at the excuse me, not the, it's just ironbeancoffee.com. That is ironbeancoffee.com. Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Bad Canadian Barbecue Company. That's right. We switched them up. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some uh, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I'm going to talk about the Brits blend. Uh, anything Southwest. If you're doing some chili, if you're doing some salsa, if you're doing some tacos, of course, the Sonoran Heat is also an amazing taco mix. Uh, that, that, that'll that take care of you right there. That's all you need. Uh, coffee and Q is one of my favorites. Uh, I've never met a piece of beef. I'm not willing to put the coffee and Q on. So if you're doing some steak and eggs, if you're doing some steak and eggs, coffee and Q. Uh, if, you're, if you're not doing steak and eggs, but maybe just doing some scrambled eggs, I would like to throw out there that you could check out the two border. It's maple, but it's also spicy. You got some red pepper flake in there that that's perfect on your eggs. And let's not forget about the old fashioned. Once again, never found a piece of beef. I'm not willing to put the old fashioned on. It's it's bourbony. It's cherry. It's got just a li- just enough bitter in there, just like the cocktail. That's where it gets its name. It's bourbon. It's cherry. How could you go wrong? Now, uh, you can find those spices and a bunch more spices over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That's Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Use Sloopcast 10, Sloopcast 10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Once again, that is Sloopcast 10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butts covered. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Discord? We have to stop counter we're, we're counter pro, we have we only we, we don't we're, we're pretty light in the uh in the live listeners right now we have to stop counter programming good stuff like oh what are we going to do we're just going to record at the same time the michigan wisconsin games going on oh gee why how, how come we didn't get more people in the live chat oh because <laughs> we're stupid <laughs> it's all good it's, it's all, all good. good if you want to join the live chat ask us questions while we record all that stuff uh, you can join us on our Discord server. Although the live chat, I want to say, the, just, just just so we're clear and fair, the live chat function is behind the uh, the Sloop Cat paywall. Uh, so you would have to hit us up on Patreon. It's only $3 a month. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you today, Jared? I have no complaints. I could complain. Actually, Kyle, that's a lie. I have many complaints. I have so many complaints, but none of them are relevant to the podcast. So I will keep them to myself. How about that for honesty? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it here. Uh, Just some quick notes here before we go into... Uh, what we consider the meat of our episode here. Uh, some of the old news here in terms of when it was announced, but in terms of episode, yeah, this is new to us. New to us. Uh, <laughs> Big Ten tournament for the basketball tournament coming up here has been moved from Chicago to Indy this year. 
surprising no one this has been in the rumor mill this has been floated out there a bunch but it's it's official now it's it's you know the big 10 has actually come out and said it's happening so it's new or mm-hmm. note worthy newsworthy i tried to com- i think i ended up trying to com- combine note and news and ended up with newt <laughs> so i have newt worthy the i don't know uh the game is now officially in indianapolis yes what games uh, are in indianapolis thank you <laughs> um also good news sort of uh, roundabout way yeah so texas got their quarterback over the week um they land their five-star quarterback malik murphy and not quinn ewers so yeah. good news for buckeye fans here that pretty much ends texas pursuit for quinn yeah so texas got their quarterback how state's got theirs let's move on yeah and the, what's interesting here you know why this is so interesting for ohio state beyond what kyle just said which is of course huge texas no longer thinks they have a chance to flip yours otherwise they don't make a move on malik murphy Mm -hmm. Uh, Another thing to note here, uh, Malik Murphy, Quinn Ewers feel like two guys, much like Fields and Lawrence, who are just going to be compared to each other throughout their entire career. So it's interesting to see that now come into play. And the other thing here is that it's not just that Texas is giving up on Ewers, which is true, of course. It's true. They, They don't bring in Malik Murphy otherwise. But I have to figure if Texas feels like Texas doesn't have a chance with yours, then that means I don't think anyone, because if anyone had a chance, if anyone had a chance to take yours away from Ohio State, it was Texas. So this says to me, not only has Texas given up, this also tells me that everyone else either has or should. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I think Oklahoma will keep trying. Uh, I think that's a, a distinct possibility, but uh, I, I always felt good that yours was staying at Ohio State. So it's not it's not news. It's not it's not huge, but it's still great to get actual confirmation that that is what is happening. So, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, you are staying at Ohio State for yep. sure. Now, also also staying at Ohio State is Coach Washington. Yep. Uh, don't want to get too much into it because it's still a lot of. Just a lot of information still being tossed around behind certain paywalls and all that. So I won't go too much into it, but pretty much Washington looked like he might've been going to Tennessee, but changed his mind and is now staying at Ohio state for the time being. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he was looking for a tad more control, a tad more say in the defense I think he's maybe received some level of confirmation that that is actually going to happen now. Um, You know, I'm sure there'll be a pay raise involved, although I don't think the pay raise was the be all end all of it by any means. But, you know. It's still uh, it's still money. It's still nice. Austin uh, says uh, they offered McDonald's, but he's more of a Burger King guy. I, I beg to differ. Yes, Tennessee probably offered a McDonald's, but he's more of a Wendy's. Yeah, get get your cultural, get your geographic stuff down there, Austin. This is Columbus. We're a Wendy's town. <laughs> yeah. Um, last bit of news here. You don't walk into Atlanta and just be like, "Hey, want a Pepsi and some chicken that isn't Chick Fil A?" That's that's not that's not what you do. You don't ask for a Pepsi in in Atlanta. All right. Yeah. Uh, last bit of news here. The dead period, which just seems to just keep getting extended, extended, is yeah. extended once more to May 31st. Yeah, which I think puts JTT back on commitment watch. Um, I've mm-hmm. said for a long time now, and I've not wavered on any of this. I know a lot of people got concerned that JTT was JT Tui Molau just in case anyone's not familiar with that's our shorthand on the show because we're, we're bad at pronouncing names. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot of people got concerned that he was not going to uh, when he didn't commit that maybe he wasn't going to come. But uh, I, I think that 
this pushback still uh austin asks jtt has to be on campus by what june august um he has to commit soon yeah uh i'm not sure like what ohio state has said the deadline is i i know that um uh, I, I think it just basically I think it has to do with whenever the academic deadline is for. I, I think it's probably what it boils down to academically. What's the what's the enrollment cutoff date for Ohio State? And I don't know that answer. Um, Kyle, are we, we going to do a look it up, Kyle, look it up situation, Kyle. Is that what we're doing right now? Ohio State academic. Enrollment deadline. Fall semester 2021. Yes, that's right, Austin. Look it up, Kyle. Look it up. <laughs> um, it looks like here. Um, look it up. Oh, no, just Kyle. continue on here. <laughs> just continue oh, no. On. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, I've never wavered that JTT was coming to Columbus. I always felt good about it. Um, for a couple months, Austin says July one, we have a look it up, Austin, look it up situation. So I, again, I'm, I'm not concerned about this. We just, we're just, it's always been a, not, not always, but over the past few months for, for us anyway, it's been a when, not if, so that's it. We're, it's just a, it's a when, not if. So July one appears to be the, the deadline in place here for, from Ohio state's perspective anyway. All right, Kyle, uh, I think that's it for uh, nonsense, sort of extended football nonsense, some news. Uh, Kyle, let's get into some basketball. What do you say? Ooh, basketball. It's been been a pretty big topic of ours the past few episodes here. It and keeps, it keeps swelling. Not? It keeps Buc swelling. Yeah. Buckeye is still on a roll here. Um, had two victories uh, this past weekend, one on the road against the Turpins. and. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, terpen, the terrapins, the terrapins, and then a a great win over the this last weekend. Yeah, uh, it's always you know Indiana is a very good team. They've certainly had as as is is Maryland. They've certainly had bigger wins as of late. Uh, these are two games that you absolutely expected to win. Um, and, you know, you have a Penn State game coming on. Uh, Austin says that's some five tier work on the who on the Hoosier call there, Kyle. S tier. Oh, well, it, it, I was looking at the little window. It's anyway. Um, <laughs> you have a game coming up against Penn State. That's another game you expect to win. Um, mm -hmm. But then next Sunday which is a game we're going to have to work around because we're not going to counter program that. Um, in fact, we'll prob probably probably like the whistle will blow. Hey, uh, Sloop Cats who want to join in the live chat. I'll just let you know right now what our recording schedule is next Sunday, unless you hear otherwise. The whistle will blow on Ohio State Michigan basketball and then we'll uh, then we'll record. Does that sound about right to you, Kyle? Yeah. So Austin might be right about 3.30, 4 o'clock, depending on depending on how the game goes. Well, it's basketball, so it all just depends upon if we have to call a thousand timeouts inside the last minute or not. Mm -hmm. Because basketball. But yeah, um, Ohio yeah. State uh, trounced Indiana. <laughs> it's, you know, they, they, they at one point had, I think, a 21 to zero. Was it a 21 to zero run? Maybe a 19 to zero run? Uh, not to start the game. Because Indiana scored six points and then it was something crazy like that. But yeah, Ohio State essentially after after Indiana puts up like six points, it was six to three. And then Ohio State went on a crazy run, an absolutely monstrous run. And it was just a lead that Indiana got down a couple times. Indiana got it squeaked down a couple times, but uh, never was able to recover from not all the way. I think they got within five points a couple times. Um, and then eventually, eventually Ohio State just put put the throttle down and ended the game late. Uh, Liddell had an amazing game. 
he was shooting behind the arc and looking good. Uh, he was rebounding well. He was passing well. It it looked like he couldn't miss at times with the ball in his hand. Kyle, are we are we losing Liddell? Is that is that what's happening here? Is Liddell? I, I don't. Back I don't see how, how they're keeping him. I yeah, don't. he's he's putting up. Has the team peaked? Who asked that question? My thing's still not updating. Michigan Buckner has the team peaked. Um, I hope that they're peaking. I, I hope they're in mid peak it w- would be because they're they're hot right before the tournament now is it too far before the tournament we'll see <laughs> we'll see um i have concerns about ohio state going super deep into the tournament simply because they they don't have a true center and that's always very concerning to me if they have a bad shooting day i don't know how well they recover from that because when ohio state's shooting well behind the arc then you're you're shooting well behind that. And I think they are potentially unstoppable. If Arns mm-hmm. is hitting it from behind and if Washington's hitting it from if, if they're I apologize for that phrasing. That was terrible phrasing. The but if they're hitting it from behind the arc, that's amazing. Uh, I don't know if they can be stopped, but if they go cold and the teams are able to sort of tighten up their zone and if they don't have a big guy inside, I, I you know, it only it's 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 the NCAA tournament. It only takes one game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they shot forty four percent from behind the arc there. That's that's just re, that's just crazy. Ohio, and the one thing that I'm still very skeptical. I mean, I'm I'm thrilled to see Ohio State shooting the ball really well. I mean, they've been putting up points in the seventies these past few games here, but I'm still very really concerned with with their size against some of some of the other teams that could potentially give them issues and what we've seen in previous losses for Ohio state as well. That's just my biggest concern. And if, like you said, if they go cold behind the arc there, it's, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long game or it might be really difficult for them to, to come out on top. Yeah. But the other, but other big thing here with Ohio state, what they're doing really well is it's shooting really well beyond the charity line. Right? They shot 90%. From yeah. the free throws against Indiana. <laughs> Yikes, Indiana, 54%. And uh, and one of the things you'll note from the Indiana game specifically, Ohio State early in the year um, was just turning the ball over constantly. And yeah. in, the, in the Indiana game, it seemed to just be the other way around. Uh, Ohio State was forcing those turnovers, or maybe Indiana was, you know, it looked like good defense to me. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, especially while you're watching live. And I did not have a chance to rewatch the game, but especially when you're watching live, like was the defense forcing the turnovers? Was Indiana just giving them away? Uh, it's it's always hard to, like I said, when you're watching it live to to definitely to, to tell the difference, especially with some of the camera angles ESPN was using. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Now Austin's right on um, with next week's game against Michigan. How is Ohio State going to size up against um, Dickerson? That's that's tough. That's tough to to um, have Key and Young go up against. And I thought they did well against Indiana, or excuse me, um, Iowa. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we'll, oh, yeah, we'll see. Definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll um, see. I, I think it's very important for many reasons how Ohio State plays against Michigan next Sunday. Yes. Uh, for yeah, many, absolutely. many reasons. Uh, I, I think it'll tell you how they can, how, what, what can they do in the tournament? And I think mm-hmm. Michigan will be a great litmus test for, is this a, is this an elite eight team or is this a final four team? And I think the Michigan game might hold that answer. And I'm not even saying that they have to win that game. Um, or that. It's not a win loss thing to me. It's it's beyond win loss because maybe you win a close one. Maybe you lose a close one against Michigan. It's just how do they how do they function against a big man on a really good overall team? Yes. Although uh, Kyle, the or, or is uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Wisconsin, Michigan still playing, right? Do we know score on? Do we go? Yep, I'm pulling it up right now. I think I think Austin's helping us out. Oh yeah, Michigan's making making Wisconsin a run right now. Five. Wisconsin's only up by five four, now. Four. 
Yeah, so it, we'll, we'll see. That's that boils down to we'll see. I think again, how how does Ohio State play against Michigan will tell us a lot about their tournament chances. Yep, yep. All right, Kyle, we have some basketball questions from our from our Sloop Cats. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to start yeah, so, with? Yeah, let's we'll, we'll start from the top here. So Buckeye Zach asks, how could the Buckeyes fare in the NCAA tournament if it were to start tomorrow? I think that I think overall they would fare really well. I think I think they're on that cusp of what Jared just said, an elite eight to a final four team, just depending on which Buckeye team shows up. Are they one that can hit 37 plus percent behind behind the arc there? Or are they one where they shoot like 25% behind the arc? Yeah. I they they just will have to be on top of their on top of their three point game if they want to go far because they yes. just don't have the size to bang consistently underneath mm-hmm. as, as good as Kyle Young is. And as good as Liddell is, and they are, they're very, very good. Um, yeah. and, and especially with a lot of the, the blue blood uh, basketball programs being down this year, I think, I think Ohio state has a really solid chance given that the they're in the right bracket and that they don't have a, bad mismatch but and, and if they're able to secure that one seed that will go a long way because i think there's like two really good teams right now i mean mm-hmm. like elite level teams and then there's a bunch of very good teams like very very good teams and i think ohio state's in that next batch of very very good teams but i don't think they're among the best two they mm-hmm. might be three but they're but they're not in the top two Yep. All right. Um, another question is, is a yeah, one seed uh, theoretically Austin, possible? Austin says Baylor, Gonzaga, and a list of seven or eight, everybody else's. And yeah, so I think yep. getting that number one seed, or at least like, what's the difference between getting to the final four and not getting to the final four? I think getting a number one seed or at least a high number two seed that doesn't put you in the same bracket as Baylor or Gonzaga will take you a, it could be a real big difference between elite eight and final four because ohio state can beat those teams any given sunday i put sunday in air quotations there you know applies to basketball as much as if not more than football so yeah any given sunday but that's not a game you expect to win yep all right, another question for Buckeye Zach. is it once theoretically possible in march as we watch the buckeyes continue winning well at the start of February. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Uh, I mean, they're a one seed is absolutely on the table. Uh, one last question from it. Well, another question from Buckeye cool. Zach. Could this be the year, even without a true center, the Buckeyes make the jump after 61 years? Uh, I mean, could they? Yes. Would I put a large sum of money on it? No. Mm-mm. That's that. That's that's it. I, I can mm-hmm. they? Yeah. Ohio State can win it all. I just don't don't put money on it unless you you get some pretty decent odds. Don't don't bet that straight up. Uh, he also asks. Um, he puts an over under here two and a half. Um that there will be 20 point blowout wins on the remaining basketball regular season schedule. So what, there's five games left on the schedule. They could potentially blow out Penn state. So that's one. So you're looking at three games here. So Is they have a total of three five games, games left? left, five games. Yeah. Five games. Well, three to go over. Oh, okay. I'm on the same page now. So oh, Penn state, I would say yes. Michigan game. No, Maybe not. I'm just, I'm not. Yeah, no. Yeah. Michigan State, I probably wouldn't. It's it's up in East Lansing. I'm, I'm going to say no. It's not uh, going to I be. I think this team might play better on the road, actually. You can then make the they, argument. Then you finish the season home to Iowa and home to Illinois. No, no. So yeah. I'm going under. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You, you need three. If it was one and a half, then we could have a talk. Because maybe Michigan State, because they're not that great this year. So maybe, 
that is a tough, tough way to end this season here. Yeah. You're playing a top five Michigan team, top 15 Iowa, and a top 10 Illinois team to finish yep. the season. Absolutely. We're going to find which out who this next question. team is. <laughs> which, which takes us to our next question. Three and a half wins for Ohio State's men basketball, men's basketball for the remainder of the regular season. So we're just doing straight up wins now, but now it's three and a half. Yikes. Uh, Nomad says that Michigan won't be a top 10 after today, which is. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll see. Maybe. Oh, five. man. Yeah. So f- only losing one game in the final five games here. Uh, it's three. possible. It's certainly possible. You, you know what? You know Would what? you I put money on it, though? You know, I will go over. I, I don't feel too com- confident in it, but I will go over. Yeah, I will. Victory over Penn State, victory over Michigan State. I'm going. I'm going to say victory over Michigan. Mm-hmm. There's three, and then you have one victory either against Iowa or Illinois. Yeah, I'll I'll say yes over. I I agree, but it's it'll be tough. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nomad, who is also uh, in the chat here, uh, on a basketball team with very few early departures. Would you rather have seven to eight good now players? Or three to four really good now players with six to seven good players who are one to two years from being really good. Oh, I'm I'm lost. <laughs> Would you rather have seven to eight uh good players? Yeah, it's it's uh, more of a depth. Uh this season specifically, one of the reasons why Ohio State I think is playing so well is because of how deep and old they are. Uh, Mm -hmm. You needed to be deep and old to succeed this season. Uh, I mean, I mean, with some of the injuries that happened, I mean, that's why. um, So why uh, Justin Aaron's was able to develop and get some playing time earlier in the season and able to make a lot of those shots, too, because he's had that experience put into games earlier on in the season. So earlier injuries and players not being able to play gave opportunities for the bench to get on and get more experience. So I think that really benefit Ohio state this year. Yeah. Generally speaking, I think the winning formula is to have like a solid crew of developmental guys, three or four year guys. And then just like that one, or if you're real lucky two, like one and done two and done sort of guys. I think the I think that's the ideal to have like a base of veterans and then like one, if you're lucky two elite level one Studs. or two and done sort of players. Studs. Uh, in a normal year, I think that's the I think that's the winning formula. And and this year this year it's just depth and experience. Yep. All right. We have a couple of football questions. A couple of football questions. What time? Yeah, we'll do a couple football questions and then and let's, then we'll we'll hit up the, the second half here. Sure. All right. So we got um on our Discord Kabuto. Uh he asked us alternating two quarterbacks rarely work. Mm-hmm. Why don't teams with two good pass quarterbacks put two on the field at once? I know Nebraska did last year, but not with dual passing threats. Each passer could read only half of the field. What are the logistical pitfalls? So when you're talking about having a quarterback on the field, to me, that's a necessary waste of you only get 11 players, right? If two of them are quarterbacks, then that's one less person blocking. That's one less person out there running routes. That's one less. You see what I'm saying? I I think you're putting yourself behind the eight ball in the numbers game. And on top of that, it makes you completely behind the eight ball in the. In in the running game, because your quarterback's not blocking. Or or. (laughs) Austin says, you know, I said a blocker or a catcher, Austin, a tight end is both. Uh, it's I, I don't really see how that can work. And yes, rhythm is a big thing, not just for the quarterback 
throwing rhythm, but also the cadence for the offensive linemen. They're so used to a certain cadence and they like that under just, they know the cadence and the rhythm of a quarterback. You put somebody else in there that can really throw things up. You're going to see a lot more false starts and all that. Yeah. So I would just say the logistical downfall of it is putting yourself behind in the numbers game. Unless you have like a Braxton Miller. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the rare exception. But he's talking specifically about two like pocket passers. Yeah, yeah. Would not work. Nope. I I don't see it. All right. Gangland asks us over under 10 games planned. Excuse played. me, 10 games played during the regular season. I'm I'm not anticipating cancellations this year. I'm just over. I'm I'm not saying things will be normal by the time football season starts. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not an epidemiologist. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um I think overall, my I don't know if there's gonna, I don't I would anticipate there are not going to be like regular ticket sales in the shoe this year. I don't, especially at the beginning of the year, I, I just don't, I don't see that happening. But again, I'm not an epidemiologist and I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Are you right? As, as a uh, sun card says, almost never. Yeah. Am I right? Almost never. Almost never. I, I'm almost never right about anything. But uh, I, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. Uh, as far Mm -hmm. as like getting people in the stadium. But I I also see us being far enough along that I think the vaccinations will be prevalent enough that the football players can be vaccinated at that point. I don't think we were like to herd immunity by September, but I do think we're at the point where we could get vaccinations to football players by September Mm -hmm. and, and not take them away from people who actually need them more. Mm-hmm. You know what you need more of, though, Jared? What's that? Is Some it caffeine? coffee over at the Iron yes. Bean Coffee Company. Go. The Iron Bean <laughs> Coffee Company. I was waiting for you to respond. <laughs> I was waiting for you to respond, which is why I hesitated. Iron Bean Coffee Company, as I mentioned at the top of the show, veteran-owned, small-batch, roast-to-order company based out of Perrysburg, Ohio. Why, why should you go with this coffee over ones you can pick up at the grocery store or some other coffee shops we won't name? Well, I'll tell you why. It's a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee. It's fresh roasted after you ordered. It's a fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, integrity is their core value to do the right thing even when no one is looking. High-quality coffee beans from Colombia, Brazil, uh, Honduras, Peru, and many other far off lands too. Uh, I could go on and on, but be sure to just check out all the great, great uh, coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com, such as the, the Rocco, the Thor, uh, Integrity, or the Unicorn. Get, get a surprise. Get, get, a, get the Unicorn and, and get a surprise of whatever that will be there. Again, check out all the great coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee rooster. This episode of the Slopecast is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Car... Uh, oh, boy. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I haven't, I haven't done it in a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company uh, is an Ohio-based, uh, Cary, Ohio specifically, uh, barbecue seasoning company. He's also got a food truck, so it's not just just not not just about the seasonings, you guys. Uh, but one of the things I do want to talk about is the Just Send It. This is a box set of spices that you can buy. It includes the S and P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. Why these four? Because these are your do it all spices. These are your do it all spices. The do it all spices that can the versatility. We're all about versatility with this pack. Uh, these can be put on anything. The S&P bud, I call my potato cheat code. If it contains potato, if it is a potato, I don't care how you're cooking the potato, put the S&P, bu- S&P bud on it. Uh, the smoked, uh, I would put, I think, maybe on fish. 
I would put the smoked on almost anything, especially uh, in the meat variety. Cajun, we all know what Cajun is. We all love Cajun. It's versatile. It goes great on chicken. It goes it goes great on everything. It's Cajun. How could how could you go wrong? And then there's the Sonoran heat, which I think to me is just the that's 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 it. That's king versatile right there. You need something with just a tiny bit of spice, just a little bit of spice. It's the Sonoran heat. You need something with no spice, maybe the S&P bud. Maybe that's your king versatile. But you want just a little tiny bit of a kick, go Sonoran heat. Uh, but you can get all four of those in the Just Send It box set over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butts covered. You know, I, those are some good seasonings when everybody's talking about their favorite <laughs> in the chat there, Jared. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's uh, I, someone was telling me to like uh, carry steak, carry steak. Yeah, the carry steak's great. I'll, I'll maybe I'll hit that one up in the next ad read. <laughs> Mad Canadian pays for three of these. I, I can I can spread them out, you guys. <laughs> All right, Kyle. All right. Uh, this Let's is do some more. we're going to do some more questions. Uh, but I, I do I do want to point out that this next segment is uh, also kind of brought to you by a sloop cat. Uh, this one being Austin, uh, Austin Formation, Austin Graham over in our discord. Uh, we had been doing some themed questions the past few weeks. And he was like, hey, uh, how about this week? We do. Would you rather? And then he threw a bunch of would you rather questions at us? So we did over unders a couple weeks ago. Uh, we did. What did we do last week? I've already forgotten. Uh, we did. What did we do? Come on, got got guys in the chat. What did we do last week? I swear I forget. Uh, superlatives. Yes, that's right. We did superlatives last week. So this week we're doing would you rather. Uh, so uh, this one was suggested by Austin Formation. So uh, a bunch of these questions are his, but they're all inspired by his. So thank you, Austin, for this. All right, Kyle. This one's from Austin. Would you rather? have the number one rushing offense this year or the number one passing offense? I always love having a rushing offense because being able to run all over your team, especially going down the stretch, going into the fourth quarter, you're still getting five, seven yard chunks. That's just, that just demoralizes yeah. the opponent's defense. doesn't, no passing offense can demoralize you more than just running it down their throat. They know it's coming, but they cannot stop you. Yeah, the, the only, I, I agree with you. The only real downfall is, is that if you find yourself in a position in which you get down early, it's harder to come back if your yeah. pass, if your passing game is deficient. But the uh, but but ultimately, yes, I agree with you, because honestly, it's hard to go down big if your your rushing rushing if your rushing offense is that level of dominant. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next one. Uh wear scarlet or gray uniforms only for the whole season. So Kyle, you have to pick one. Scarlet or gray. I don't know if he's I, I assume he's talking about football. Maybe maybe provide a football and a basketball answer. Austin says football. Well you didn't say that in the question, did you Austin? <laughs> <laughs> uh man like I, i'm going red if those are the two options i'm going red i'd go with scarlet yes absolutely uh that being said i love when ohio yeah, State exactly all that's lights. why i said scarlet austin <laughs> oh for pete's sake chill the, uh yeah i'm going i'm going scarlet they, they never wear gray jerseys mm. now maybe uh, they should but they don't and uh, I love it when they go all white. So I, I think to me, the better question is actually wear scarlet all season or wear white all season because they could, in theory, wear white all season if they wanted to. Yeah, that 2017 against Penn State. Yeah, those were amazing uniforms. Yep, that that's the one time they went head to toe in gray. Our uh, next question have a two quarterback system early or lose two quarterbacks to transfers. I'm not, I'm not opposed to having a two quarterback system early in the year. Like when you're still trying to figure it out. I, I don't want to see it past like week three, but 
uh, I'm not opposed to doing it while you're still, like I said, in like the 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 figure it out phase. Mm-hmm. I, I'd probably choose lose two quarterbacks to transfers because that tells me you got a quarterback already. That's true. That's a valid point, Kyle. Mm-hmm. And you know, right, so you, yours is early. and yours is coming. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to lose two scholarships. You don't want to lose anyone, obviously. Um, but yours is yeah. coming. Yep. All right. Uh, lose a game early or lose a game late into the season. Early, always early, always, always, always early. Always lose a game early. The mm-hmm. playoff committee waits later games more than they wait early games. That's just that's a fact. Is yep. it a is it a good fact? Is it a just fact? Uh, that that's for you guys to decide. I won't tell you how to believe on that one, but it's a fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, just Virginia Tech. I'll just say Virginia Tech. Yeah, uh, uh, three picks or three fumbles doesn't matter to me, honestly. <laughs> they're both they're both they're both turnovers. I mean, you could say probably three picks because. You're throwing the ball down the field, so they turn the ball over down the field further. Yeah, versus that's what I was thinking. I, I mean, missed that. So I mean, some you saw every once in a while an interception is just a good old fashioned arm punt. It can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to go interception, but I mean, obviously neither is ideal. But obviously yeah. neither is ideal because you wouldn't have been asking otherwise. Yeah, uh, get the number one recruiting class, but no star quarterback. Or get the number 26 recruiting class, but the number one quarterback in the class. 26 is harsh. Yes. I, I'd probably go to the first. Uh, I, I'm just gonna, Clemson has built their empire because they, they weren't always pulling in top five recruiting classes. Clemson built their empire on getting like just outside the top 10 recruiting classes, but Deshaun Watson. And Trevor Lawrence. And I, I think I think I think when I when I read this question right here, I think of one particular university a few years ago, um, Louisville. You, yeah, you got a you got a really good quarterback, and they were good. They were they were good in terms of Louisville standards. Yeah, but that's but then, according but then to one, Louisville. But then once once he left, we have higher <laughs> standards here. Um. I, I probably I go, have to go I'd probably go with the class. first, honestly. I have to go number one class. Yes, because you got studs that's, that's, around, that's, right, that can, you got studs around the quarterback that can make the quarterback look better. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Alabama did that forever. I mean, look at yeah. Miami during the early 2000s. Yeah. Who the hell was Ken Dorsey? No one. Yeah. That's who Ken Dorsey was. So, and of course that's, that's 20 years ago at this point and it's a different football game, but Bama won a lot with okay quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have to go, I have to go with the the number one. If you said number 16 or number 12 recruiting class, I might lean that way, but 26, no, give me the number one recruiting class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, Next question here, be drafted in the first round, but not given a chance to start for a year or be drafted in the fourth round and step right into a starting role. Depends Um, on the position for me. Yeah. Because you could be, you could be like a, let's use Justin Fields, for instance, Justin Fields, first round, first round pick. Now, should he start that first year? Probably not. Probably needs to get used to the speed and adjustments to the NFL level, perhaps. And then give him a year and then his second year, step right in and be really be put in a better position. Or you can look at uh, McLaurin, a not a first round draft pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, was he third round? Was he? I can't I, remember which round, but I, I don't think it was that you could late. do like McLaurin where he's not a first round pick, but steps right onto the field and making place at the Washington football team. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I, I don't know if I have a solid answer for this. Uh, I'd say first round just because of the money. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can look at that too. Yes. It's, it's okay, McLaurin first- was a third rounder. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, uh, the money, take, take the money. 
because you might blow your ACL the day after the draft. Get your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Live in Dublin, Ohio or Dublin, Ireland? Ohio. There is only Ohio. I don't yes. live in Ireland. I mean, I'd like to go to <laughs> Ireland. If you, if you told me I had to get a hotel in one place for a month, I'd go to Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. Uh, but uh, live? Got, I'm not leaving Ohio. Are you hot? Yeah. Oh, oh, stay in Ohio. Yes. Uh, eat Skyline for one meal a day, every day for the rest of your life or not being able to watch Ohio State football ever again. What are you doing? I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to need a lot of just like stomach medicine. <laughs> I mean, it's skyline, but come on, man. That's yeah. cruel. You're cruel. Austin. That is cruel and unusual punishment. What are you doing, Austin? That's mean. All doing? right. Uh, take a tackle from tough Borland or allow Chris Man to punt a ball <laughs> straight into your gut. Um, the ball because the ball is going to sting more borland could actually cause like damage i think the <laughs> yeah. the ball is going to hurt more up front the hit from borland's going to last a while i feel like you get <laughs> over the ball quicker we're getting live we're getting live scoring updates for the wisconsin michigan game in the chat and i love it <laughs> yeah i agree i think i think chrisman Punting it right into your gut more than tough. Just like Jared said, you could land on it wrong. I mean, we've seen so many quarterbacks who they take a tackle and they just injure their shoulder. They injure their arm or whatever the case may be. So yes, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take a, I'll take a punt right to my gut. All right. Go back and rewatch the last 10 years of Ohio state football for the first time, basically watching it with no memory. Mm -hmm. Uh, or see what happens in the next 10 years in one setting or see what happens in the, yeah, in the, watch into the future. Uh, I have to watch into the future simply because I do a podcast and I would just become the best ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would just, I would become the best ever at predicting things. Kyle would never win the sloop picks ever again. <laughs> oh, not, not to mention gambling nomad says okay biff yeah not to mention gambling mm -hmm. gotta take the future man gotta take mm -hmm. the future yes absolutely I, 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 I do like that my first instinct was like i'll be better at my podcast that's that's the first instinct i had not i could make a ton of money not mm -hmm. no just like business podcast me be good at podcast such a <laughs> dork. Austin says, well, you can't get worse. <laughs> says a Patreon subscriber. <laughs> oh, oh, because of, okay. He, you guys can't see that down in the chat down there, but he, then he dropped a, a team Kyle emoji. <laughs> the emojis don't show up in the chat. If you weren't already. I tell you aware. what, like I do envy, like sometimes, sometimes like when I'm bored, I'm like on Twitch, just, yeah. scrummaging I love Twitch. different things and then and then you see somebody's like hey first time playing this game or whatever and it's the game i've played and seeing their reaction it's like oh i wish i had that reaction again <laughs> just the first time you see like you play a game and you get those first reactions and just excitement yeah. that it that is something that is something to uh that i do envy seeing people's reactions and all that I, I, yeah, I, I have, I, I could tell but, stories about that all day, but we need to, we need to move. Yeah, but we'll, we'll move on. All right. Nomad. Would you rather fry or grill chicken ring, chicken wings? Um, flavor fry health grill. That's, I mean, realistically, so you rather do Jared, uh, in my, in my actual life grill. That's, that's what I do. I could, I could fry them. Um, I don't. Yeah, I mean air fry, but air frying is not frying. Yeah, air, I, I think I think I would go with, air frying I I is go just with, baking with a fan. <laughs> I think I think I'll go with grill. I think I'll go with grill. <laughs> not with the attitude, it isn't. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Stuart underscore E four US Fet, would you rather have a scarlet out or a black out for an Ohio State night game? 
And why can't Ohio State get on the same page like Penn State? I think Ohio State's getting better with their color coding only because it's becoming a little more traditional to do it. Um, uh, there, there's just always people who are resistant to being told what to do no matter what. Scarlet out would be would be really tough. Like I, I just couldn't see the Ohio State team just scarlet scarlet. Like like they would they would match the, the stadium with the fans. Uh, gotcha. Ooh. Yeah, it just wouldn't work out. Yeah, it just wouldn't work out. I, I think I think I would stick with the blackout. I think so too, especially for a night game. If it was mm-hmm. an afternoon game, Scarlet might be better. For a night game, go black. Yeah. Uh, would you rather yeah, have taken Carmen or NPF looking back? I, I don't want Carmen because Carmen didn't want to come here. I think he looked for every opportunity to leave the state of Ohio. I think that was that was the big thing with him. And I also think he just wanted to do something that wasn't expected or. Mm. Um. Ultimately, you take NPF because NPF wanted to come here. And I know that might sound like a cop out answer, but I, I don't think it is. Carmen had every opportunity to come to Ohio State and chose not to. So you don't yeah. want that person. Yeah. And again, uh, I know that sounds yeah, like a cop out answer, but yeah, I'll stick with NPF. I'd stick with NPF there. All right. All right, uh, Tori, question asked, How far? Would how far did you see Ohio State getting in the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament? Also, can we win the NCAA tournament if we're unable to win the Big Ten tournament? Um, so the, the second part of that question, yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you you can win yeah. one but not the other, absolutely. Yeah, the Big the first Ten is question. That I think this year kind of answer that. I I see them as a right now. I see them as an Elite Eight team. Uh, if they if they get lucky and are get the right matchups and are hitting their shops, it could be a Final Four team this year based off of what we said earlier in this year with so many teams being down this year. Ohio State taking advantage of being able to play into their depth earlier this year to develop some of those players. I, I see them. I see them at it as an Elite Eight this year. That that's I think that's where I'm going as well. Okay. I agree with it. I just, I co-sign everything Kyle said. All right. Awesome. All right. Uh, which coach has truly done the best day Holtman or Tom Ryan, or Tom Ryan. I'm going Holtman. And I say that because of what they inherited, I'm not taking, I'm not trying to take anything away from, from Ryan day, but he was given the keys to a very, very fast race car. And by the way, I've seen a lot of coaches been given keys just as good and crash that race car into a wall. Okay. So that's, this isn't me anything taking anything away from Ryan day, but I'm, I'm going, I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick with Holtman simply because he's building a thing instead of maintaining a thing. Um, So that's, yeah, I, that's it. I, I would go, yeah, I'd go with Holtman too. I mean, yeah, just what he inherited, just like you said, Jared. And I think he just develops. I, I think, I think the way he's been developing right now, these players has been really, I think he's done a really good job. Uh, Nomad, uh, Tom Ryan is the wrestling coach. Uh, yeah, I, I'd probably go with Holtman at, at this point right now. I mean, Day has done a phenomenal job. I mean, two playoff appearances in two years, two Big Ten champion championships. And by the way, I just you haven't, as lost, as, you haven't lost to your right, you haven't lost to your rival. <laughs> so, as far as Tom I, Ryan I mean, goes, I, I just don't yeah. feel like I'm qualified, really, to say um, how much of that was Kyle Snyder, how much of that was I. I, I just. I, I don't want to, I just, I just don't feel qualified to judge mm. the, the wrestling program as a whole. I, th- I mean, that's, that's it. I just, I, mean, I don't right. have, I don't have, I'm not going to, I don't know enough about college wrestling. I don't know enough about Ohio state wrestling. 
I, I and I'm just not going to pretend to. That's that's I mean, it. They've been, I mean, they've been very consistent for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like it. Yeah, absolutely. Michigan, I just I just don't know. And I'm just not going to pretend to. does want to make note that. Unfortunately, the wrestling team lost to Michigan for the first time in at Michigan since 2007. Mm, well, so there you go. You got to fire. He's fired. He's done that. I'm kidding. All right, uh, last question here from Stuart. Rank Gene Smith's best coaching hires in his tenure at Ohio State across all sports. All sports? All sports? Are you what? I, I appreciate that you think I'm qualified to answer that question. Uh, I'll just Urban Meyer number one, Chris Holtman number two, Ryan Day number three. All right, fair enough. Yep, moving. I'll stick with that. Uh, all right, uh, Buckeye Zach, would you rather sniff an actual Wolverine's behind, but or stand in the proximity of a brown bear with a basket full of goodies? Uh brown bear because i feel like i can actually maybe run away I'm, I'm at least far enough away that i could potentially run uh would you rather cryogenically freeze yourself in hope of seeing the basket bucks win a championship in the future or wait it out to see if they can win it in your lifetime wait it out yes wait it out wait it out all right would you rather become as dull as dan patrick's yet wealthy or would you rather continue keeping it as cool, keeping it as cool and as real as Art Bell? Uh, the the second one. I don't know. What I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Agreed. Yes, I go with the second. <laughs> uh, would you rather, if you were uh, in a, a high school football recruit, would you rather play for Ryan Day, Lincoln Riley, or Lane Kiffin? Um, if you're a quarterback, it's a bit of a toss up. They're both amazing. If you play defense, Ryan Day. That's a that's a given. Um, Lane Kiffin's just not making any of these lists. And mm -hmm. I'm. I don't know beyond that, like, I don't know. I say I'm saying Ryan Day across the board, except maybe if you're a quarterback, then it's a toss up. Mm -hmm. Jared, would you rather. Um, if you had to choose <laughs> John Wayne or Clint Eastwood. But thank you for skipping that one. Uh, <laughs> the one we aren't going to read. Thank you for skipping it. Um, uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, that that's it. That's that's the whole that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, cats or dogs? Dogs. Yes. <laughs> uh, he asks, "Who wins World War Three? The robots. <laughs> the robots. <laughs> Nobody." Yeah, All that's right. that's the right uh, answer. Let's see, what else do we have here, Jared? We got a few more here. Uh, would you rather um, invest in cryptocurrency or buy an endless supply of Philly cheesesteaks? I, I, I do invest in cryptocurrency. And by the way, our Discord in the premium section of our Discord, we have an investment channel and we talk a fair amount of crypto in there. Uh, that mm -hmm. is behind the paywall, though. Uh, I do invest in crypto. I have lots of thoughts on crypto. Hit me up on crypto. I'm not going to share any of that here, but hit me up. I will talk your ear off about crypto. Uh, in Philly cheesesteaks, wild delicious. I I have a, I have a figure to maintain, you guys. <laughs> or or to salvage, actually, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. To 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 right the sinking ship of. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, another question here. Would you rather begin a new rivalry with Clemson for some odd reason or see Harbaugh succeed this season to renew the historical and traditional relevance of the game? I've said it before. I'll say it again. I want Michigan to be good because I want Ohio State to break their heart every year in November. I want the Michigan being completely dejected isn't fun. I want Michigan arrogant. I want just like it was I'm a few reminded, years ago. When, I'm reminded of an old episode of The Simpsons. You don't throw a pie into a clown's face. That's not funny because the clown doesn't have any dignity. 
you throw the pie into the face of the man wearing a suit because you take away his dignity. That's where the comedy is. I want Michigan to be good so that when Ohio State throws the pie in their face, it hurts just, more. Just like their revenge tour. That's exactly. A example. That's the ending example. the revenge tour was way better than anything else Ohio State has ever done. Period. Under <laughs> I mean, a bit of a hyperbole there, but you know what? I might stand by it anyway. Uh, Sun Card asks, uh, how do I stop getting these car warranty folks to, to, to stop calling me? Uh, you don't. Let me, let, let, let me know if you do find that answer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I, I sent the I sent a tweet out at one point saying like if I actually buy one of these warranties will they stop because it might be worth it. Um but then someone I wish I knew who I wish I could remember or find it but someone in the Discord said I don't even have a car registered in my name and they still call me. So I think the answer is you don't. Yeah. All right, Austin formation when playing Monopoly, what is your piece of choice? Uh, race car and dog. Race car one, yeah. dog two. The dog. It was either dog or the top hat for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Race car or dog for me in that order. Okay. <laughs> what kind of barbecue do you think Gus Johnson enjoys the most? Austin says the thimble is criminally underrated. Okay, Austin. We, <laughs> we all have opinions. <laughs> what kind of barbecue does Gus Johnson enjoy? Ooh, what kind of barbecue does Gus Johnson enjoy most? Let's see. He's from Michigan. I don't, I don't know. What's, is there a Michigan style bar? Where's, where's TMC in the chat when you need him? <laughs> Michigan Bucknuts typing. Hey, Michigan Bucknut, what, what type of barbecue do they do in Michigan? Is it like Kansas city style? Is it what, 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 what you got going up there? While we're waiting for him to answer. Oh, no, he answered. Uh, more like East, more like East Coast, he says. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just. It's not vinegar based. It's not the vinegar base that I see here in North Carolina. Yeah, I like a good vinegar. Y'all, problem. The problem with the North Carolina barbecue is they use too much mustard. But I love a good vinegar based barbecue sauce. But there's just too much mustard used by some North Carolinians. Mm -hmm. uh yeah, let's see sort of like, uh, yeah. it, austin asks if you had to how far do you think you could currently run without stopping you know i was just saying that i need to salvage my my physique from coke because i haven't been to the gym in a very long i was i was on a roll there for a minute i was i was putting an hour on the elliptical um and which i, I get isn't running i i acknowledge that but not very far. I am not a distance runner. I'm not built for it. I was never built for it. I'm, 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 I was, uh, historically speaking, uh, an offensive lineman at heart. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm more of a short burst guy. I am not a distance guy. Now, Kyle, Kyle might have a better answer here, at least from his past, if not his present. <laughs> Cause Kyle was a track totally and field guy. Answers. Those are two totally different answers, right? Now. <laughs> what's your best right Kyle? now what's right, your right best now, right now i might struggle to be able to run a 5k in one run just because i haven't ran in a while back then back then i we had to i was able to do like a a 10 miler before but i i'd struggle with a 5k right now right this second austin if you're in a hold because he's kind of holding my feet to the fire in the live chat right now uh, not very it would be it would be bad it would be embarrassing the right this second embarrassingly bad would is the answer how far i i i don't know if i'd make a half mile right now two laps around the track and that's it i don't know if i could right now it's embarrassing it's really very bad i'm just in the he house all the time he didn't say how fast so you could just take it nice and slow <laughs> well, then you're walking at a certain point. You're walking and that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Another question from Austin. What is the best movie starring a football player? 
Okay, so this is difficult uh, because the first thing that popped into my mind was Naked Gun. And I love the Naked Gun movies, especially the first two. The problem with that is that it's O.J. Simpson, which I, I get is, is problematic. But the success of the movie has nothing to do with O.J. Simpson. He's just sort of a. So maybe he's not even starring at that point, but he's. I don't know, uh, but it's O.J. Simpson. So that's 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 an issue. But that my I love I love the Naked Gun movies, so I think that was my first answer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a kit. No, it's more than a cameo. So let's not get it mixed up. O.J. Simpson was more than a cameo in Naked Gun. But he also just probably wasn't like first build. <laughs> he definitely wasn't first build. He was at best like fifth on the call sheet, maybe at the very best. Yeah, supporting role, supporting role. So, yeah, he's going to allow he's going to allow me saying O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I don't know. I. I, know, I might I might. I might stick with uh, probably like remember the Titans. I, I always enjoyed that movie. Is there a football player in that movie? I don't know. I don't I'm, not <laughs> good I'm Maybe. sure Denzel played in high school. It's fine. Sure. <laughs> uh, last question. Your son card. Would you rather Ohio state have uniforms that change often like Oregon's or never like Bama and Penn state? I don't mind the current like one-offs. I just like you have, Ohio State's uniform. Now that they, they need to go back to the gray sleeves. So let's just acknowledge. Yeah, Kyle's drinking, but gave me a thumbs up. Uh, they the, the the uniforms they wore in the playoffs this year should be the permanent uniforms. So let me just say that. One hundred with the white. I prefer the white numbers on the shoulders as opposed to the black numbers. Which they did this year as opposed to 2015. I think they did the black numbers on the shoulders. Um, I think the the jerseys they wore in the playoffs this year should be the jerseys. So first and foremost, we're make we're going back to that. Second, I don't mind doing a crazy one off once a year. So I think the medium that they have found is is OK by me. I don't want them. I don't want this constant barrage of new uniforms like Oregon, especially Oregon a few years ago. But I also don't mind having a little bit of fun with it, unlike stodgy Bama and Penn State. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I just agreeing with that, Kyle. You have, yeah, yep. Yeah, I I completely agree. Yeah, All right. I I don't I don't want to see just the wide range of uniforms that Oregon has. But I mean, if you were to choose, say, hey, either what Oregon does or what Bama Penn State does. I probably would stick with like what Bama Penn State does. Yeah, if, if we're sticking to a binary answer here, if it's a true well, and I guess it's a would you rather. So I guess it is a binary question. So, yeah, I would I would lead Bama Penn State. I would lean that yeah. side. If I had to choose one, which I guess I do, uh, I would I would definitely go with Bama Penn State. But I do like the medium that Ohio State has found. All right, Kyle, I think that's it. That is it. That's it for the show. So we had some fun. Talk some football, talk some basketball, did some would you rather questions. Uh, this was fun. I always appreciate uh, the fan interaction, both live in the discord and the uh, and the questions. Um, if anyone discord or not, because uh, you can reach us on on Twitter as well. Um, first off, join the discord, but discord or not. Um, like, like I said, we did superlatives, we did over-unders, we did would-you-rathers. If there's another um, type of question, another, you, hit us up. We'll, we'll, we'll keep doing this. This is, this is a lot more fun than I think some of our previous Wasteland episodes. I like having these themed questions. This is a lot of fun. So if anyone else has any ideas, let us know, um, and we'll, we'll take your questions. And uh, like I said, come join the Discord. There's... You know, there's there's premium sections of the discord, but there's also lots of free sections of the discord. So you can just come try it out. And if you really, really like it and you want access to some of the other stuff, you can or or not. You can just there's lots of people who just have a lot of fun in the free sections of the discord. Uh, lots of people in there. We have a lot of fun. So come hang out with us. Um, Kyle and I are active in there. So, you know, come hang out with us. Come chat with us. So, yeah, that's that's it. 
uh, like I said, free or not. But if you, if you do want access to the premium or if you want early access to episodes or a lot of other cool benefits that we have, uh, you can check us out at patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can access Discord via discord.thesloopcast.com. And we have a bunch of other links, including t-shirt stores. I'm wearing a 7071 t-shirt right now. Kyle's wearing a Buckeye Sloopcast official merch right now, which you can find at merch.thesloopcast.com. This is uh, 7071, the numerals. Uh, so seven zero seven one dot the sloopcast.com. And like, we have a lot of links and you can find all those links at, um, at the sloopcast.com. That's just a, a campsite page that you can find all the links at, um, follow us on Twitter. I guess I don't care. I don't care about Twitter anymore. Come hang out in the discord. If you really want to, if you, if you really want to come hang out with us and chat and come hang out in the discord. I, I, I'm trying to spend less. Than, I, anytime I go said, on Twitter, I get in trouble. Anytime I go on Twitter, I get in trouble, Kyle. As we've said at the top of the show, we've got barbecue back here. Yeah, we get. I mean, it's it's theoretical barbecue, but it's barbecue nonetheless. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A couple of things. So you mentioned Al Washington staying with Ohio State. Well, they also add in two more coaches to their coaching staff. Uh, former Buckeye CJ Barnett will be the player develop will be in a player development role and Ohio State hires Todd Fitch as an offensive analyst. Uh, Todd Fitch has had some experience with Ryan Day back in Boston College. He was also previously a head coach at Vanderbilt. So some, some uh, coaching experience in the past too. So being there as an offensive analyst for Ryan Day can't go wrong with that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Austin at Austin wants to know if he can make a closing music suggestion. Absolutely. Yeah, go for it. I ha- actually did jokes aside. I actually did have something lined up, but now nah, this is more fun. <laughs> Cordial sins. Absolutely. Can we under fire? Spe- oh, he even he even brought the song. Didn't just bring the band, brought the song. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. So I think that's it then, Kyle, right? That's that's all we got. I asked him while he was drinking. That is him. all today. All right. That's it. So uh, per Austin's uh, request, we're taking we're a radio station now. We're taking song requests. Uh, we're ending today's episode with the cordial sins. The name of the song is under fire. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the cordial sins. Thanks, Austin. I always appreciate that. Nice episode. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, too. I appreciate both music suggestion and and the compliments. I always take compliments. Yes, thank you. Uh, The cordial sins are great. Um, I don't they don't get enough play, obviously, but. Thank you, Michigan Buckner. He's even he's even complimenting the 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 balance level on my camera which he knows is a thing i was i'm insecure about sometimes because he was here before we started recording oh thanks for saying i don't look green (laughs) i'm just i'm just accepting everything as a compliment because it's good for my mental health to just assume everything's a compliment hey jared you suck today thank you That means I was good at other times, right? That means I have a high standard and I just didn't meet that high standard. Thank you, Jared. You're terrible at pronouncing names. Oh, is that the only criticism you have? I already knew that. So if that's the only criticism you have, then you must like everything else about me. I just accept everything as a compliment. That's how I, that's how I navigate this world. (laughs) Before Jared gets too much more upon himself, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get to our sponsors here. What? Hold on. Michigan Buck asks, what's not to like? I don't know. Just go read the YouTube section, uh, the re- YouTube comments. Uh, go go check out my Twitter mentions. Um, I, I, there's lots of people who don't like me and that's fine. 
I'm not Applebee's. I don't try to cater to everybody. Some people aren't going to like Kyle and I. I'm okay with that. We aren't Applebee's. We're just not your cup of coffee. Yeah. Cups of coffee comes in lots of different roast and flavors for a reason. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like the Loki, which I guess is, I guess what we are, go drink the Odin. There's lots of Odins out there. This is a Loki. Speaking of, let's, uh, let's end the show and, and talk about our sponsors. Mm-hmm. Once again, I'd like to thank the Cordial Sins for ending today's episode. And of course, I would like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's episode. Kyle, we talked about a lot of the spices. Um, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite ones to put specifically on beef. We're going to talk a little bit of beef. How about that? What do you think about that? Uh, yes, sir. We have the old fashioned. You're going to add a little bit of bourbon to that. So you get a little bit of you get a little bit of that oak, a little bit of that cherry, a little bit of that bitter. If you like an old fashioned, if you like bourbon, if you like cherry, uh, I, I know I've put the old fashioned on some like slow cook roast in the crock pot. And that always turns out amazing. So that would be my recommendation there. I know that Mad Canadian uh, specifically labels it as a, uh, I think a rib rub, but I'm telling you right now, put it, put it on like a, like a bottom roast and, and you'll be good to go. The absolute go-to for beef, however, is the carry steak. Put it on your hamburger, put it on your steak, put it on, put, you can put that on a roast. I know I, I cooked up some uh, stew beef. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in the pan, which you shouldn't do unless you really know what you're doing, just because it'll it'll turn to leather unless you know what you're doing. But uh, did some stew beef in the pan and put carry steak on that. And it was it was amazing. Uh, you can put S&P bud on beef because it's just that versatile. Same thing with the smoked or the Sonoran heat. You can also put those on like a, a hamburger or whatever else. Those those are versatile spices. You can do whatever the hell you want with those. The coffee and Q, I think, is another one that's amazing to put like on a slow cook roast um, there. But that, I just want to warn you, there is actual coffee in that. So if you're if you're caffeine sensitive, you might want to stick with the coffee and Q being a lunchtime thing instead of a dinner thing. That's that's just a little bit of heads up for me to you. There's no it's not like coffee flavoring in there. That's actual coffee. So there is actual caffeine with that actual coffee. In fact, Kyle, uh, did you know that? It's the cast iron that's that's in that's in the coffee and Q. You want to you can you can tell us about the cat. Kyle's going to tell us about the cast iron here in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to tell you that Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, you can there's a promo code. It's Sloopcast10 at Sloopcast10. You can use that at checkout to get 10 percent off your entire order. Uh, So that's the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the Mad Canadian BBQ dot com. And you can, once again, use promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butts covered. Once again, once like, I would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode as well. Uh, Jared mentioned the cast iron. Jared, have you had their cast iron before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of, yeah, I mean. It's it's I it's hard to say it's one of my favorite. They're all one of my favorites. Kind of like the Mad Canadian, where they're all one of my favorites. But the cast iron um, is, is I would say in my top two of their medium roast. <laughs> okay, and I, I'm I'm start, I'm wanting to get into coffee, Jared. Yeah. So for those who are wanting to get into coffee, I've been told that the Loki yes is a great way to start. Yes. Uh, Possibly the cast iron from what you just said as well. I, I, I think so. I wouldn't start with it. If, you know, if, you're, if you're getting new into coffee, I wouldn't recommend starting with a dark roast. Correct. Yeah. So maybe you could go with, I would say probably maybe with the ride or die. It's another medium. It has a distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. Yeah. Um, so it's a bourbon coffee with a superb smoothness and flavor to it. Uh, what else have we got here, Jared? Uh, if you want some dark ones, um, oh, you have look options. at the drinks from the skull of your enemy. It's a traditional Indonesian coffee that is edgier and smoother, thick, creamy, and chocolatey with notes of strong cedar, sweet tobacco, 
wine and spice. Check out those and all the great coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that's ironbeancoffee.com, where they are America's local coffee roaster. <laughs> 